Notification volume, 0%. Good afternoon, and welcome to More Than Meets the Eye. I'm your host, Blind Prime, and for today, I have for you G.I. Joe Classified Baroness with Cobra Coil. This is the Target exclusive line called Cobra Island, and uh, this is their deluxe model that came with a motorcycle. If you have found yourself on this channel, you are on Blind Prime, a channel devoted to raising awareness for the blind through alternative means and methods. So if you wouldn't mind, do all the things below that everyone else asks you to do, and we'll move on to talking about the figure. This figure was given to me as an early Christmas present from a subscriber of mine named Roquin. Um, if any of you want to give me a, a Christmas present, that'd be awesome. Uh, I'm looking for the Ram Cycle. have not been able to find it anywhere. It's, it's just been, wow. Everyone talks about how many Ram Cycles there are, and I haven't seen a single one. There's just disproportional inventory going down somewhere. You know, uh, Viper Island is talking about how many he saw in Canada. And I'm like, I want one. Just one. <laughs> People talking about it being on sale at half off. And I'm like, no. I just want one. <laughs> so I got the, uh, the Baroness with the Cobra Coil, which I'm really happy with. And uh, I'll, I'll talk to you about it why. So this figure right here, she stands about even with the Cobra... Infantry. We're just going to set Cobra Infantry really close. There we go. Uh, the Baroness is supposed to be six foot tall, and I believe Cobra Infantry is six foot one. So Cobra Infantry is just, just the slightest, slightest bit taller than Baroness, but not by much. We're just going to move you back over here, Cobra Infantry. There you go. We'll just set you up over here in the corner. Please don't, please don't fall. Please don't fall. Okay. All right. Now, let's talk about Baroness. Here, just remove her helmet first. I like talking about the helmet first. Uh, this is a helmet head. Like, you can pull off Baroness's head and replace it with a helmet. And, and this helmet is really nice. It's a good solid plastic. It's got a little weight to it. It's also got some um, really, you know, ex exactly what you would expect from G.I. Joe Classified. An amount of molding and uh, detail in this helmet that is just astounding. And... You know, that's that's why these figures are, are, are so much, and they're really hard to get. It's just because they're that good. You get these two what feels like fangs, one of them running on either side of the top of the helmet, and you can feel the faceplate there. It's a nice shiny material or shiny paint job, as opposed to the rest of the helmet, which is partly, you know, smooth feeling, partly matte feeling, depending on the area. There's different grooves and stuff in here that you can feel. It, it's just a top-quality helmet, and I really appreciate... Hasbro in the G.I. Joe Classified line for including a helmet. You know, I talked about the uh, Black Widow in my last video, and I, I was upset. I didn't mention it in the video, but I was upset that she did not come with a helmet. She came with two separate head sculpts, but neither of them was a helmet. And I'm thinking, you know, what, what, kind, of, what, what kind of example are you showing people who buy this? Black Widow is, is not a superhero. She doesn't have regeneration powers. She doesn't have a head made of steel. She doesn't have the ability to become steel or diamond or anything like that. She's just a human being. She's one mishap away from splattering her brains all over a sidewalk. That's not good. You know, that's terrible. I know it's just, it's just a bad example to set forth. And I, I'm just really upset with Hasbro for not including a helmet with my Black Widow. Like, it would have been neat to have a helmet that matched her outfit. And then you have this really sleek, person with a helmet on but I, I believe that's a missed opportunity and I'm glad to see that or uh, feel that the G.I. Joe classified line did not miss that opportunity and actually gave us a helmet that matches the Baroness at least in feel it does it's got similar texturing to the entirety of Baroness but getting off my helmet platform and moving on the uh we'll talk about the snake next so let me get it off from under her hair I've had it uh, positioned under her hair uh, the snake's pretty neat. I've just figured this out. It's got slight bendability. Very, very slight. But that can allow you to, uh, you know, spin it into a tighter coil or bring the coil out a bit more. It's a, it's a very versatile little snake. It doesn't have much movement, but it's got enough where you can position it on different figures and sizes. It's got some good texturing to it. You get two types of scale texturing. One for the upper scales and one for the lower scales. Like, you know, his belly scales. 
He also has a freaking laser beam that comes out of his freaking head. So this is a freaking snake with a freaking laser beam coming from its freaking head. And Dr. Evil should be proud. Cobra managed it. And it's not a shark, but, you know, it's a cobra. So that's better in some ways. I'm going to set the uh, little cobra off to the side and we'll get on to Baroness here. Now, Baroness's head sculpt that actually has a face, not the helmet head sculpt, the regular head sculpt, has some hair that runs all the way down to uh, the small of her back. It's straight and flat, but it has texturing to it, and it's really good texturing, and it's got some weight to it and density. It's uh, You can almost feel every single individual hair here, which is really, really nice. I've heard some people talking about you know, the, the hair is so black that you can't see the individual detail they put into the molding, but you can definitely feel it. So I consider myself lucky I don't have to just look at it, and I'm just, I can feel it and go, oh my god, this is, this is amazing. They, they, they outdid themselves with that. The face sculpt is pretty decent. It's a face. And uh, it, the coolest part about it is these glasses. These glasses are actually a separate piece that they've glued onto her face. And they even have clear plastic for the... Uh, for the lenses on each side. And according to some YouTubers I've watched talking about this in their reviews, the um, the glasses actually make the eyes of Baroness appear bigger when you look through the lenses at them. When you look through the sides of the lenses at them, they're regular size. But when you look through the lenses at them, they're bigger. And I was like, well, that's an extra bit of detail that uh, Hasbro didn't have to do. They didn't have to make those lenses, you know, look, make the eyes look bigger, but they did, and that, that's really nice. She also comes with a knife, or a dagger. It's a, it sits in her left leg holster. I'm just going to pull the dagger out. It's a nice size dagger. It's, a, it's one and a half hands in length, or at least her hands. I, I did that measurement earlier. We're going to put it back. It's a nice dagger, but it is a little flimsy, and it's really small. And it's easy for me to lose, and I don't feel like losing it. There we go. She also comes with two guns that are of the gold variety, from what I understand. Let me get uh, Mr. Destro over here. Destro, give me your gun. Destro, give me your gun. All right. Here's Destro's gun, uh, Pimp Daddy Destro. And from what I understand, the gun on Pimp Daddy Destro is also painted gold. So here is Baroness's gun and Pimp Daddy Destro's gun. If uh, for you people out there that can actually see, this will be a good comparison of the golds, at least in my opinion it will be. So there you go. There's a comparison on the two golds. There's another comparison. All right. We're going to put Destro's gun back and Baroness's gun back. So we Baroness comes with two of these pistols so she can wield one in each hand. Uh, due to... Not having double jointed elbows, Baroness does suffer from the fact that she can't be in a pose where she's drawing her pistols from her back. Uh, she just doesn't have the range of motion necessary to achieve that. Like, you can kind of get it. You can kind of attempt it with what she's got. But it's just... It's just not right. There needs to be just that little bit extra motion. That little bit of extra movement to get it there. It's almost there. Like, look on... Here, yeah, the people that can see, like, look at that. Look at how close that can get. But it's just not quite there. Like, you gotta shove the shoulder down, but then the hand is a little too low for the gun. Uh, this this would have easily been fixed with double-jointed elbows, and with Lady J that they came out with the next year, having double-jointed elbows, this, this, is, this is a shame. But it's the worst part of the figure. Texturing-wise, the body sculpt is top notch you can feel on her upper arms her kevlar body armor that i'm assuming is you know her motorcycle outfit so that she doesn't experience road rash when she crashes if she crashes and of course you know she's wearing that helmet so if she crashes she's not going to experience a crani cranial phenomenon that could lead to expiration and uh, she's got gloves on and the gloves are actually like gauntlet things that stretch up to her forearms which have some nice shiny armor to keep her safe from road rash. And since these are the hands that she'll be utilizing to steer the motorcycle, they also keep her, her forearms safe from stray bullets, which is nice. She's actually what feel, she has what feels like a breastplate over her breasts, which is pretty neat, like an actual breastplate. Um, 
uh, you can feel the shininess of it and on the inside areas you can actually feel the texturing where it changes and it's actually got straps that stretch around underneath her arms which was a nice attention to detail that's really cool she also has the midsection which is kind of done in that matted feeling kevlar type type uh, plastic and um, because she has a unique joints in her midsection her midsection area the core of it actually has a it's connected with a ball joint to her hips and connected to a ball joint to her uh her upper torso so she can do a few cool uh turns and twists you can actually get her like doing some really good movements it's uh even though she's got this body armor that can get in the way it it allows for a little more movement than normal and um, i like the fact that they included that as kind of a sorry for excluding double jointed elbows she's got these nice boots that run up all the way up to her above her knees and they are shiny and feel like they're made Message. of seven seven four four three two one three four six parcel tracking hi your parcel with tracking number yg i'm just that's a spam call or a spam text message i keep getting those and um uh, her back area is nice and textured. It's it's really good. Like this this figure's top notch. It's got everything I would expect from GI Joe Classified, and it does not disappoint. And uh, before we move on to the motorcycle, there's one more cool little thing that you can do if you have a Destro. Like this figure, I've done moved her around so many times. She's no longer in her stable spot. All right, we get Destro over here. Now we get the Destro, and uh, Destro, if you didn't know, is actually in a relationship with Baroness, and Baroness's real name is Anastasia de Cobra. Yes, Anastasia de Cobra. Her last name is Cobra, or the Cobra, which is just great. It's a, <laughs> like, good job, guys. But, um... There we go. You can actually put them where they can wrap their arms around each other and then just kind of stare deeply into each other's eyes. Now, oh, here, I'll spin it around so you can see the other side. It's with a little work. This is actually pretty nice. And uh, you can do a nice sociopaths in love kind of uh, setup. You know, have a nice Valentine's Day thing. But I don't have his little pads on the bottom of his feet to help support him. I'll have to get more pads because I'm currently using them for all sorts of figures. All right, we'll set Baroness off to the side and we'll talk about the motorcycle. There you go, Baroness. So, the Baroness with Cobra Coil, of course, comes with the best accessory, the Cobra Coil. Now, the Cobra Coil has got two accessories of its own. It's got these cool guns. One fits on each side. I took one off on one side, and then there's the other one. Now, the neat thing about these guns is that they have a peg on the back. This peg actually fits into your cobra infantry's back because your cobra infantry comes with these two ports one on each side of their back and you can just take this nice cobra coil gun and just plug that in look at that it just fits nicely right there now where did you drop your gun at there it is now we can spin the cobra coil around and we take the cobra infantry gun and we plug it in Make sure I'm not plugging it in upside down, which I totally am. There it goes. I'm plugging it in now, and it plugs in quite nicely to the spot where the gun for your Cobra Coil plugs in. So now you can have a different loadout on your Cobra Coil if you have some Cobra Infantry or even Cobra Troopers. Like, oh, if you had the Cobra Trooper with their sniper rifle, put a sniper rifle on each side of this thing. I think that would look cool. Um, this thing also has a uh, windscreen that moves up and down. Oh, yeah, we're, we're kind of done with you, Cobra Infantry. Let's switch out the guns again. Here, here. Put this back. Get out of the way, Cobra Infantry. You're blocking the camera. So get your gun, and then go go to the officer's lounge. I don't care if you're not an officer. All right, set this over there and plug that in. Cool. Now, the windshield on this uh, Cobra coil can move up and down. And um, that's to you know, change its appearance depending on the height of the figure that you put in there. If you're someone like Baroness, you can lower it down because she has a, a lighter, you know, a lesser height. Or you could pick it up for someone like Destro. The handlebars here each have their own ball joint. 
so they can each move apart, down, up, all sorts of different directions. And uh, this is nice because, you know, you have different figures in the Cobra line, or the G.I. Joe line, that have different shoulder widths. So this will allow you to put all sorts of different figures on your Cobra coil with different shoulder lengths. And I think that's pretty nice. Uh, that was an attention to detail that, you know, I expect from Classified. So, you know, if you got your Baroness, move him closer, she's got a smaller shoulder width. If you've got your Destro, move him further apart, he's got a larger shoulder width. And, you know, find somewhere in the middle for the Cobra Infantry. That's pretty nice. Uh, Texture-wise, the seat for this is a, a matte texture, kind of similar to the Kevlar texture. And I like to think that it's actually, a, you know, a seat made of Kevlar. That would, that would just add to Cobra. It's got uh, some some of uh, what feels like gauges, three circles directly near the windshield. Uh, the windshield actually barely covers them, but they're right there on the uh, top of the fuselage or the air, the, the gas tank area. The There is a gas tank uh, little cap, a gas tank cap right there. So I'm going to, and because of the exhaust on the back, uh, this is not a electric vehicle. Cobra does not care about electric vehicles. Cobra has a gas powered motorcycle. The wheels are made of rubber and plastic, and they're not cheap wheels. They're actually really nicely designed. They have some cool stuff. I have a feeling that they have huge hollow points between the uh, wheel spokes, which is really nice. The, tech, the uh, molding all around the wheels is, is top-notch. I just, I just can't get over this molding. This is so much, it, it's just so nice, and it's so much better than that Marvel Legends Black Widow motorcycle. The back wheel has the same thing. It's a big, heavy, rubberized wheel with nice, heavy uh, wheel struts on the, in the middle. That uh, uh, wheel spokes that you can, I guess, see through, maybe. I don't know. But this thin motorcycle can hold two figures. It's got a, uh, it's got places on the back, two places where you can actually hitch up the uh, boots of a figure that's sitting on the second seat. And then the main seat has these two footrests on the bottom that each have a peg in them so that your figure can actually, you know, you can plug the pegs in and hold the figure there much, much more sturdier. And finally, this motorcycle's got these, uh, well, not finally, but this motorcycle's got three exhaust ports on the back and they each feel like they can actually hold some sort of blast effect. Uh, they're too small for the Transformers blast effects, but if you have any other type of blast effect, they will fit in there. And the middle one is actually big enough. It can hold a Transformers blast effect, I assume. And also it can hold an Abitsu stand port. So you can plug your Abitsu stand into there, and then you can pose this guy doing like wheelies with the Abitsu stand helping to support it. Or you can do it like the front wheel down, like it's coming from a jump. Or using the Ubitsu stand and the posability of the handlebars, you can actually do a sideways look, like it's making a sideways turn. And uh, that's, that's really nice. I like that. And uh, finally, this thing has a great kickstand. Like This is a kickstand bar that runs across the entire bottom of the motorcycle. And you can set it up so that the motorcycle will not move. It will not fall over. It's nice. It's sturdy. Unlike that Black Widow motorcycle, which had a tiny little kickstand, every motion knocks it over. And it doesn't help that Black Widow's motorcycle has rounded wheels instead of flat top wheels. This thing is made more for desert activities or driving over sand like it does in Cobra Island. And it just this thing handles a lot better. Well, I think that's about it. We got the nice kickstand done. We got the texturing done. Turn it around. There we go. Yeah. Anyway, you've been watching More Than Meets the Eye, and today we've been covering G.I. Joe Classified Fairness with Cobra Coil. And thank you once again to Roquin for this wonderful Christmas present. I really appreciate it, and I hope that all of you have a Merry Christmas as well. Until next time, bye for now.